I'm joined on the line by the Vids Radio Academy's Alna Schultz. She's going to speak to us about this week's episode of The Science Inside. Now, it is an episode that I'm sure every South African is interested in because it has everything to do with rugby. Alna, it started off as a bit of a sore point for South Africa, but after our, our win to um, the US, I think South Africans are feeling a bit better about rugby, don't you? Yes, I think we've sort of gotten over licking our wounds and now we're getting back into the spirit of things. Hopefully, it'll continue being a good story. Absolutely. I had such a giggle at the little snippet you played on this week's episode of Japanese commentary when they win against us, two times uh, Rugby World Cup winners. Of course, I guess the, the Japanese commentators were absolutely elated. Yes, although I kind of found that they were still very calm in comparison to our South African commentators. We tend to get very hyped up about these things, but they did seem very happy. They absolutely did. So let's get into it. We all know that when it comes to development and even transformation in sport, it all happens really at a school level. And you looked at something very interesting. Your team looked at something very interesting, and that's got to do with some of the less than ideal practices that go on when it comes to rugby at school level. Tell us about this. Yes, as you said, it's such an important time and that's why it's very competitive. So we all know that school rugby does get very competitive and people find it very important, but I never thought about the fact that some kids really start doping. So that's what we spoke to Shona Hendricks about. Um, and sometimes it's teenagers as young as 17 who are already taking things to enhance their performance. And quite interestingly, sometimes high school players that test positive for uh, illegal substances didn't mean to dope. It was an accident um, that kind of slipped into certain supplements that they were taking. So it's a very interesting thing to look at. Although it does sound a bit like a likely story too. No, mom, I didn't mean to dope. Yes, yeah. it's, it's one of those tough things. I mean, in the end, whatever's in your bloodstream, you're responsible for it. But the problem is a lot of the companies that produce very legal, positive, good um, substances that that professional sports people shouldn't be using. So there is some crossover and sometimes there's contamination, unfortunately. <laughs> I think that sounds so fascinating and of course more on this week's episode. Let's move on to a really interesting part of the show that dealt with ALS or motor neuron disease and its um, apparent link to rugby. We know that one of the most famous South African players, Jus van Westhuizen, is um, dealing with a motor neuron disease at the moment. Now, your team investigated if there was any type of correlation. Without giving away too much, what did you discover? Mm, well, we really started at the root of it, um, at the root of this, this supposed link, which is that ALS might be caused by recurrent head injuries, not just in rugby, but American football, soccer, riding accidents, these kind of sportsmen and women get exposed to concussions so often that there is the worry that over a lifetime that can cause motor neuron disease. So we started looking by looking at concussions themselves and how sports um, sports doctors prevent concussions. And then we spoke to some experts, as you said, about this link. And I don't want, as you said, I don't want to give away too much. But the crux of things is that. It's isn't that obvious, even though a lot of studies have, so to say, proven a link, it's not, um, it's, it's not a given just because some studies say so. Uh, it, very, it is very interesting, so I would definitely recommend that story to hear more. Finally, we look at the issue that I think most rugby moms are absolutely paranoid about, and that's safety when it comes to scrumming or tackling. You look specifically at safety when it comes to tackling in rugby. Tell us about that. Yes, we spoke to a specific doctor who is researching why some rugby players seem to be able to get out of a tackle as if nothing happened to them and others are more likely to get injured. So they're doing various studies at the moment um, 
in, in high school, specifically high school students, to see whether it's um, a technique problem or what it might be. So that's quite interesting in um, whether it's luck or not that you might get injured. I want to tell us how our viewers can interact with the Science Inside via social networks and if we want to listen to previous um, episodes, where can we find those? So the most the very easiest place to find us is the Science Inside on Facebook because everything is there. You can just link through and uh, listen and download everything from SoundCloud. Um, but journalism.coz is where you can find all the old shows. Or if you are an Apple user, just find us on iTunes. Alna, as always, it's great chatting to you and we'll catch up again next week. Wonderful. Thank you.